Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we're going to be discussing one of the most uh, iconic sports sedans of the early 70s, the uh, Datsun 510. Uh, sadly, this car is not mine. This belongs to a good friend of mine who I work with on The Tonight Show. His name is Greg Elliott. He's the prop master. And a lot of days I go, hey, is Greg here with the props? No, he's out working on his car. You know, I say, oh, okay. But then I go out and go, oh, the car is pretty cool, so that's all right. You can, you don't worry about that. You can, you can, uh, the show can suffer. We want to get this car finished. And as you can see, it's just been a tremendous pro project. Greg, come on in. This is Greg Elliott. Hi, Greg. How you doing? Hi, boss. How you doing? I always wonder what you're doing out in the parking lot when you're supposed to be working. <laughs> Changing and, oil. And uh, that's okay, but now it's, uh, it, it's well worth it. Boy, it looks beautiful. Thank you. It Thank looks you. beautiful. This is a 71 mm -hmm. 510. 510 okay. sedan. Did a ground up restoration on it. It was just a hollow shell in a guy's backyard when I found it. it was, oh, okay. Yeah, there was nothing in it but a wiring set. And, oh, no, no yeah, engine, nothing? No, right? nothing. There was nothing in it. So wow. I had to start all from scratch. And it had been years since I'd had a Datsun, so I've kind of forgotten some of those things. But they came back quickly. And uh, Troy Ermis Racing in Tracy, California, helped me do all the suspension and the engine work. And he did a wonderful job. I did all the cosmetics and came out really nice. It was fast. Oh, fast. they're wonderful cars. One, one of my, my second car, actually. My first was a 34 Ford, but my second was a uh, Datsun 1600 Roadster. And I was amazed at the build quality and how fast it was, especially compared to some of the MGs and Triumphs that mm -hmm. were around. It was a fantastic sports car. Uh, but this one, this was a sedan that like Paul Newman, all those guys raced yes. these, didn't they? Yes, yeah. Paul, I got a big poster in my house of Paul Newman racing one of these with two wheels off the ground going around the corner. It's too bad he, you didn't finish the car when he came to I know. Uh, you would have loved know. to have seen this. Oh, I yeah. just started it the last time we had him on. And the thing that made these cool was this was independent suspension, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, there weren't many cars in this price range back in the day that had independent It was suspension. real special. I mean, it was like moms got these cars and nobody really realized it for a little while. And then they realized how well they handled and they raced so well that they became. Yeah. And you know, it's so funny. You don't realize how small it is because even mm -hmm. a Mini now seems huge to me compared to original Mini. And this is really a nice size car. It's really not much bigger than a sports car would be. And you got the full roll cage in it and uh, we'll go through it in a minute, but let's just Let's just take it in. How much lower is it than stock? Oh, probably about three inches, three yeah. and a half inches. And of course, the wheels and tires bring it down a little bit yeah, lower. Yeah, I mean, it really sits nicely. And I like the fact you kept the original Datsun steering wheel. Yeah, yeah. that's a 71 uh, 240Z wheel, actually. Oh, I, okay. Yeah, the original ones are all plastic in the center and only two spokes. And I wanted something a little more sporty, and I bolted right in. You know, the rumor, and I don't know if this is true or not, but the rumor was... Uh, Datsun, before it changed to Nissan, it was Nissan in Japan, mm -hmm. and maybe uh, some, of our, uh, some of our viewers can tell me if this is true or not, but I was always told that they weren't sure how the Datsun would play in America, yeah. how the Nissan would play in America, and the early cars were somewhat primitive. They weren't really built for the American superhighways. So they used the name Datsun to uh, just kind of test the water. And oh. once, once it became established and the 240Z came along, then they went back to the brand name of Nissan. Now, I have no idea if that's true. It's one of those rumors I've heard. Mm. So write in the comments section. Tell me if, you, if you've heard the same thing. I'd be curious. But uh, so there's a lot of young guys don't even know what the name Datsun means anymore. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Look at what's a what? <laughs> yeah, but this is the car that really made it in America. I remember Bob Sharp racing out of uh, Connecticut. Huge. Yeah, Lime Rock yep. and all those, seeing these mm -hmm. things tearing around, beating all the European cars. Very, very exciting. You'll still see them at the Monterey Classics every now and then. <coughs> yeah, but nicely done. I like the fact that you've kept the body stock. What color is that? It's a 2009 Toyota FJ Cruisers, the ones that are blue and white on the okay. top. This is the blue, and I really like it. It's called Voodoo Blue. Oh, Voodoo Blue. Okay. Yes. Very cool. Let's uh, look under the hood. Let's okay. See what a nice job. I got to get in here there. to open the thing. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Ah. This is the fun part. Ooh. Ah, I like that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's kind of the stock thing, but it, because of my uh, tower brace, I had to right. remove the uh, springs and stuff. And I love this finish here. Tell me about this, because a lot of guys just do this in body color, but I like what you've done here. Yeah, after we media blasted it, I decided not to paint it in there, because it always gets messed up. There's mm -hmm. nothing, and this is easily serviceable. This is General Motors uh, spatter paint for trunks. Oh, okay. And we just cleaned it all out, used their primer, and I put it on real heavy. I put about four coats on there, right. and it's, it's holding up well, wonderful. It really looks great. I, I like the look of that. 
You know, I, I love this period of car because the engine compartments are so simple. Distributor is right here. Carburetors are right here. Mm -hmm. Everything now is covered with great sheets of plastic and what, and you, and you can't get to anything. Yeah, it's and so easily serviceable. Yeah, it's so serviceable. Uh, custom radiator here. Very yeah, Champion nice. Radiator makes these for Datsun 510s now, thank oh, okay. God, because nobody did, and there makes a big difference. And this is obviously an aftermarket piece, this tower yes, brake. Uh -huh. Yeah, that came from Troy Irmish as well. And this just pops out as well. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah, it's got camber plates, uh, coil over shocks in the front. Right. And uh, it's 280ZX uh, front struts and cartridges, and then it has coil over suspension on top of that. That's a dual master, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, and we had to move it out of the way for room because these I rudders see. on this intake are a little longer than okay. most of the others, and it got in the way of that, and we had to move the reservoir over. And what was the stock engine size in the stock? 1600. 1600. Yeah. What was the horsepower back? When it was 96. Here? 96. And what mm -hmm. are you getting now? Well, this is 2300 cc's now, and it's getting about 153 horsepower, but 160 in torque, right, which is right. really cool. Very nice. And it what pulls these, great. What does it weigh? You know, honestly, I've never had it on the scales, yeah, but they're yeah. very light. Yeah, yeah. What's that, fuel pressure there? Yeah. yeah, fuel pressure here. We plumbed it up from a fuel cell in the rear, and the uh, pumps in the back comes up here. I can adjust the fuel pressure if need be, and of course, keep an eye on it. Just how everything is nicely laid out. Fuse box is right there. I like the fact that this, I like this painted rather than chrome. Yeah, that actually, looks, I powder coated all the uh, yeah, that looks pieces great. instead of doing uh, chrome. I just got tired of chrome. Yeah, yeah, no, that it, looks great. something different. No, no, it's really terrific. Let's open the trunk. Oh, look at that. Nice fuel cell in there. Yeah, we put in a 10 gallon fuel cell. And you move, move the, the battery to the rear. battery to the trunk. Mm -hmm. and How many gallons is that? 10 gallons. Oh, 10 gallon mm -hmm. tank, okay. And it has a sending unit in it and a bubble, so if you turn over, it won't right, drain right. out. And then Made in the USA. We like to yeah, see that. Yeah, like yeah to the see HL that. cells are great cells. Nice sheet metal it's work and everything. It's just amazing how there. light these cars are. <laughs> it's, it's really something. When I put the doors on it, I did it by myself. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> and I imagine most of them probably rusted out. These weren't galvanized yeah, bodies. I actually had to look for panels that weren't, and yeah. it wasn't easy to find them all. Now, I'm, I'm surprised you kept the back seat in it, because you really can't get in the back seat. You really you. can't, but, you know, it was more of a, a looks thing. I didn't want the noise. I really insulated the floors right. and inside the doors and inside the fenders and everything to keep the noise out, because they were kind of noisy. And with this exhaust system, it makes it a little worse. And so. that's the five-speed in there? Yes, 280ZX five-speed from an 83, 280ZX, a close ratio five-speed, too, which is nice. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, and it fit in with their uh, the 280ZX flywheel, and everything in the back is all 280ZX as well. Uh, 411 rear gear. Oh, 411. A, yeah, nice. with a limited slip posse. Very and nice. And oversized U-joints and everything in the back. So. I like it when people use the, so the mother brand name, mothership parts, what's the word I want. Yeah. You know, like I like GM cars with GM motors. And whenever mm -hmm. I see a Ford with a Chevy engine, it just seems yeah, odd to me. I, I like wrong. the fact that the, you keep the brand uh, all the way Nissan through. Nissan and Datsun had so many pieces that were interchangeable. It's amazing how you can just go from one car to another yeah, and, yeah. and pull pieces And up. the kick plates say Datsun on them as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's really nicely done. Oh, nicely thank done. you, Jay. I hey, appreciate tell me about that. those wheels. Those wheels really These are called good. VTO wheels. They're made by a company VTO wheels in Phoenix, Arizona, and they just came out when I finished the car. I had a set of uh, American Racing Libris on here, and I didn't want to use them because they were really old. You know, they're 45-year-old wheels. And right. I saw these. I couldn't resist. I had to have them. They're really beautiful, and, of course, they help with the low-profile tires. Yeah, it's a beautiful car, and the nice thing is you can still find these pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. You know, they haven't gone crazy yet, and it's a true Japanese collector car. This is uh, this car has become almost as much as an icon as the 240Z among people yeah. sort of who know these things. Yep. And uh, oh, I think it's just fantastic. Whenever Greg drives into to work, I always kind of pause for him and look out the window and hear it come <laughs> in. But uh, we'll uh, let's fire it up and take it for a ride. <laughs> You forget how light these cars were back in the day. You know, you lose the steel door guard and the airbags and all that stuff. And, and God, it feels like it doesn't weigh anything. Turbos are nice, but a na naturally aspirated engine just has that immediacy. You know, 150, 160 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot, but it's not the horsepower, it's how much weight you're pushing. 
And this thing doesn't weigh, this thing is probably what, 2,000 pounds, 2,100? Maybe. 21, yeah. something like that. So, boy, it's, it's really lively. It's a lot of fun to drive. You know, there's a whole generation of young car guys that think 3,000 pounds is light for a car. And, uh, you know, the Lotus Elan, these 510s, the B210s, God, they're... The steering is just so direct, so light. He's got the upgraded brakes on it. And I like that it's all Nissan. That, I don't know, I like the purity of that. Keeps it yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, it pulls nicely, even in third. Horsepower sells cars, torque wins races, that's, that's what they right, say. That's right. I was going to say, it looks like a sleeper, but not really. You know, the lowered suspension, the blue paint, it really pops going down the road. And those are great looking wheels, aren't they? Yeah, I love the wheels. As soon as I saw them, I had to have a set. Little chirp. got nice long legs. I love that long pull in third gear. Yeah, it does. You see why these are so much fun to race. You know, this is a classic example of getting in on the ground floor of what soon will be a collector car. If you were to buy one of these now in any condition, I almost guarantee you'd never lose money on it because these will always be collectible. I always liked this style of sedan. I liked it in the 2002, the TII BMWs. I just like this straight sedan with the post for virginity here. You know, they, they just look cool, especially like Greg's, where the car's been lowered slightly, and you got the paint, and I love the, the painted bumpers instead of the chrome. You got a classic design with kind of updated styling cues. Very, very cool. I love driving this thing. You know, this thing is so light. It's so much fun to drive. Let's take it up on the freeway. See how she cruises. you're barely turning 3,000 RPM. I think we can go to 456s. Great sound. You know, as much as people rave about the 3 Series BMWs and all these modern cars, uh, they're really not more fun to drive than these. This is just so light and nimble, and the fact that you build it yourself, that's what kind of makes it exciting, you know? It's kind of fun to work on a car, do a modification, go out, test it, come back, you know, test That's what Greg has done. He built this whole thing himself, and it's uh, pretty impressive. You know, if you see any of these uh, 510s around, grab them, because they, yep. like I say, these are going to be the 57 Chevys of the future, and uh, they'll be going for big dough. So, Greg, thanks a lot. Oh, thanks, boss. Uh, we didn't do a burnout because he's watching, but <laughs> sometimes when he's not here, we'll take it out and do a burnout. See you guys next week. Thanks.